let's be honest, the repo man is here. He is here to take away your Lambo. He is here to take away your Parsha. He's here to take away all that, those PPP loan monies that you spent on those Charizard cards. The Charizard cards are now going to be repoed. Um, 2023, so 2022 was a, eh, it was okay. 2023 will be horrific. It will be a bloodbath. Um, we already see it in the stocks and the crypto and, you know, the languishness. Um, I saw a report by the banks today and they say one third of the countries will be in recession soon. Up to one half of all countries will be in a recession sometime in 2023. Is there predict? There's no one predicting the economy is going well. Many people are over leveraged. The Rudy Chan has lots of boxes, and supposedly in a video title, I lost millions. Now I've, you know, I I, I don't watch his videos. I just read the titles. And again, if the title says I lost millions, then I have to assume in the thumbnail it's him and his basement with his magic collection, I have to assume that he lost millions. I mean, it could be like he made billions or something, but I, I wouldn't know because I, unless I'm live streaming, I don't watch those videos because they're not that, in, I don't even watch my own videos. So like, there, there you go, right? I think a lot of these game stores are getting getting repoed. Um, they, they were not managed correctly. They don't know the business sense. A lot of game store owners, this is most times their first business and they don't know about cash flow. They don't know, they haven't even taken a business, like a basic business class at the community college would do a world of good for these people. Uh, when I opened my first business, my marketing agency, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. And I would consider myself a above average intelligent person. Um, obviously I have, I'm a lawyer. So some of these stuff like employee contracts, vendor contracts, um, contracts with my clients and so on. That was easy for me to take care of because I'm a lawyer. But some of the stuff like marketing, I know that we were a marketing agency, but how do you market a marketing agency? Uh, websites, um, more of the advertising component, uh, what your margins need to be. Um, I didn't, when we originally were trying to sell websites and so on, we just sold them for a flat rate and people abuse flat rates, right? They ask for, oh, I need this now, I need that now, I need, and when you're very, very young, and when you're very, very new, then you kind of want your clients to be happy and you don't really understand your clients are just abusing the hell out of you for a very low fee. So we had to calculate, we had to do priority a la carte, we have to change our whole outlook on how we ran a business within the first year, otherwise we were going to bankrupt. A lot of these game store owners, especially the ones that open card stores during COVID-19, like uh, Mark's Cards would be one, the guy who's uh, here for the vibes, who bankrupt himself. But right before he bankrupted himself, he paid himself, he paid his brother, he paid his wife, he paid his brother's wife, he paid his best friend, he paid an accountant that they blame everything on, kind of a scapegoat, if you will, of shorts, right, that they pay also paid very well. And uh, yeah. Uh, we will probably will cover the bankruptcy proceedings in the other in the other video channel very soon. Uh, we have to go past the Jeff Wilson part, which I think will be done by the time this video goes live. And then we'll go to Panini America and the redemption lawsuit that they're facing right now. The repo man is here. And if you don't know how to run a business and you've been floated PPP loan money, and that's how you've been running the business or you benefited from people having the PP like the other uh, category I made my other channel famous on was the gray watch market and the Rolexes, the price of the Rolexes during the boom, they were double, triple the, there was a saying in the industry, the prices change every day. And the saying used to mean that I cannot guarantee you this price unless you give me a full deposit because the price will go up tomorrow. Well, that now has flipped on its face. So the same person saying the price is changing every day when they were thinking about all oh, the prices increasing that every day no longer says that because the price also changes every day, but it goes down every single day. And the Rolex watch market, it's been absolutely uh, obliterated, if you will. Magic cards, game stores, uh, not a great combination. Amazon is still selling boxes for 72 right now. A uh, new Compenna, which I consider a very good set, is selling for 72 as of the recording of this video. And it's been on sale for that way for like the last two weeks. 
So I, I don't know why people continue to say, oh, look at the price of this. No, guys, you idiots. There's called, it's something called a sale. Like, I don't know, like every website has a sale, guys. I don't know like why you can't understand that concept. Just wait for a sale. A sale is probably based on a holiday. So just wait for the next holiday and buy cards. I believe a lot of game stores opened during the boon and now they're finally facing a recession and they're not going to survive. They don't have the business, business acumen. Um, and even if you did, it's just like sometimes a recession wipes out really good businesses. Sometimes if you're a gray market Rolex dealer and you're trying to make it and you were doing really well, um, when the Rolex prices decline to the point that the Rolexes and the supply increase in the Rolex. So a gray market Rolex dealer means that you are a secondary market dealer, right? Which we talk about magic cards in the context. But if the dealer, if the Rolex dealer now has a lot of inventory and they're selling for MSRP, then you can't really sell your watches for over the MSRP because it makes no sense. They can just go to the official Rolex dealer and get the same watch new as the one that you're selling, right? And that's what's happening with Magic the Gathering cards. I get a lot of questions, a lot of emails. Do I wanna buy this? I'm not buying shit nowadays unless it's for my personal collection. If it's for my personal collection, it's something I don't see every day. Yeah, I'll still be, but it, at that point, I'm not trying to make money. I'm just writing it off as a loss. That's where we are right now. As a game store owner, I can tell you that the majority of game store owners do not have the ability, either capital and or acumen to survive 2023. And we hear about the, oh, I don't wanna pay $5 for this. I don't wanna pay $5 to play. You won't get, there won't be any places for you to play after, man. Like one of the main problems as a Magic Store game owner is, this is like going to sound crazy, is the Magic the Gathering consumer. They've been trained to expect everything for free. They've been trained that if you want to charge them $5 to sit down and get a play F&M and do a nice event, you know, for five or six hours, right? Of fun entertainment and a safe air conditioned or heater, depending on the season. Yeah, with Wi-Fi, internet, hang out with their friends, and somebody's gotta clean, there's gotta be an employee there at all times to make sure that they're not stealing stuff. Um, even your security system, you know, I mean, the overhead on the store is quite large. I'm just going over the list, water, you know, the bathroom, you know, <laughs> people think the plumbing, yeah. All right, all right, I'll give you guys that. I know there'd be at least one comment below about the plumbing and the, uh, the uh, situation there. Theft, loss, right? The more people, I mean, you got, I mean, the more people who are there, the more likely stuff gets done. I mean, just statistically, just what happens. So, yeah, it's going to be a bloodbath. And the reason it's going to be a bloodbath is a lot of people went into the gaming scene. Maybe they opened a sports card business like Mark's Cards and they have no place. They have no, owning a business is hell. You know, you have to be what's called a masochist or something. You have to love self-inflicted pain. Owning a business is a type of hell. And you, you just have to like understand that like there are gonna be very bad times on the horizons. There are good times and good times you can make a lot of money, but there are also very bad times. And most of the times in business, it's very bad times. In 2023, I don't think anyone would ever say this will be a good year for a business, for a card shop owner. Hi guys.